Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're doing a deep dive on a new report from real estate brokerage firm Cushman & Wakefield. They recently published a new study on construction costs for industrial facilities based on a survey of construction costs in 43 markets across North America. We keep hearing about how construction prices have been volatile in the past couple of years. The truth is, some line items are way up in cost, and others have fallen dramatically as well. If you're looking to build an industrial facility, how do you get a realistic budgetary estimate of what it will cost? Well, this 34-page report does a good job of summarizing the findings of their research. Steel prices remain elevated at a 20% increase year over year, and prices are forecast to drop slightly and level out over the next couple of years for structural steel. After reaching peak levels in the second quarter of last year, lumber pricing had peaked at $1,450 per thousand board foot, and these days back down well under $400 per thousand board foot. Pricing is expected to level out but remain somewhat above pre-pandemic levels for the next few years. Some of the lumber mills are scaling back on production to maintain slightly elevated prices. Copper prices have faced significant volatility. They hit a peak in the second quarter of 2022, and they've fallen 16% year-over-year. With a slowdown in construction, a modest drop in prices is forecast for the balance of 2023. Pricing for concrete, which is a big line item in industrial, has increased 14% from Q3 of 2021. It's currently at peak pricing and experiencing some year-over-year growth. Although pricing is unlikely to fall, the rate of growth is expected to moderate over the next couple of years. Labor constraints are definitely going to continue to impact construction employment in the near term. An increase in retirements due to aging workforce and construction, coupled with a lack of young workers entering the talent pool, is definitely impacting wages, as well as cost and project timelines. The introduction of skill-based programs for younger workers, in addition to competitive wages, may help fill that talent gap in the next few years. A recent survey by the Associated General Contractors of America found that 70% of respondent firms plan to increase headcount in 2023. And at the same time, over 80% indicated they're having a hard time filling positions. The Associated General Contractors of America indicated their companies will increase pay, that is 72% of the responding firms. They're going to increase pay and provide incentives and bonuses, as well as offer more competitive benefits to retain and attract talent. When we look at demand and supply for industrial, we see that record demand has driven sub-4% vacancy rates across all of North America. As of the fourth quarter of 2022, up where I live in Canada, national Canadian vacancy rate was 1.4%. In the U.S., it was 3.3%. And in Mexico, specifically Mexico City and Monterey, vacancy rates were below 3%. With these tight vacancy rates, industrial asking rents have increased over the past couple of years. In Q4 of 2022, U.S. asking rents were up 18% year over year and up 38% since the beginning of the pandemic. Canadian asking rents have increased a lot more, up 45% year over year and 81% since Q4 of 2019. Rents in Latin America are down from pre-pandemic highs, but they've increased 12% year over year. So if you're looking at the breakdown of costs for these buildings, the national average to build a new building was $84 per square foot, but there was a pretty wide variation in cost structure from one market to another. On average, the largest cost, accounting for 25% of the total cost, was the structural concrete slab that makes up the floor of these warehouse facilities. Next highest at 24% of the total cost was the building envelope itself. And then number three was the site work at 17% of the total cost. And naturally, site conditions would dictate a fairly wide variation in site costs from one location to another. The most expensive builds were in Portland, Oregon, at $105 per square foot, and the lowest in the nation were in Houston at $58 per square foot. That's a pretty wide variation. The big drop in construction costs in Houston can likely be attributed to lower labor costs in the area, as well as the actual cost of the building structure itself. But even with that, Houston has some of the highest heating ventilation costs in the nation due to the warm, moist air coming from the Gulf of Mexico. That high humidity environment means that those buildings in Houston have higher HVAC costs than any other city in the nation. We saw a wide variation in contractor pricing. GCs generally charge between 4 to 5% in Houston, whereas they charge more than 10% in some Pacific and West Coast markets. General contractors seem to charge a 4% fee in Toronto 
and a 12 to 15 percent construction management fee in nearby Montreal. It's hard to make sense of why these wide variations are happening. Most new projects were maintaining a contingency fund of somewhere between 10 to 12 percent of the total project budget for contingency. The most expensive markets were Portland, Seattle, San Diego, and Oakland. All of these U.S. markets have higher labor costs, which contributes to the higher cost of construction. The survey also found that scale usually helps. In almost all cases, a large building, near a million square feet, was about 5% less to build than a similar building below half a million square feet. There's definitely some regional differences. Architectural costs, which includes all of the engineering, accounts for between 4 to $6 per square foot in most parts of the country. But in Orange County, California, that line item is nearly $12 per square foot, and there doesn't appear to be any obvious reason why the engineering should be that much more in that specific location, but clearly it is. All this to say is you can't just assume prices in one location will carry over to another. If you have industrial or storage construction planned for anywhere in the country, this would be a good survey for you to look at as part of your budgetary exercise. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.